Hi, hello everyone. Now, cracking a competitive examination is just like cooking. Now, if all your ingredients are the best, there is a great chance that you will succeed. But if one of the ingredients are flunged, there is every possibility that your dish may be a disaster. Now, welcome to Cafe Snacks. This is OnLearn and I am Sham here. So today we are going to present you with the top 10 ingredients that are needed to crack the UPSC examinations. The 10 questions that covers current happenings from UPSC perspective. Cafe snacks. So let's move on to the first question. Look at the question. The Chinese economy is intertwined with the world's top exporters of capital goods. With respect to the scenario, which among the following are true? Now, A. The share of capital goods among China's exports has risen exponentially since 1990s. B. China has replaced US as a leading exporter of capital goods in the first decade of 21st century. C. Around 1990, Chinese share was less than 3% of the capital goods, but it grew to more than 30% of the world's market share. D. Hong Kong and Japan are major Chinese goods importers. Now, why is this particular question being chosen? Now, the main thing is that most of the 10 questions are taken from Hindu, the newspaper. Now, there has been a large number of discussions and rumors that has been going on that there will be a ban on Chinese products from the Indian economy. But is it possible? Now, there is a present article or editorial that speaks about it is not possible because the Indian economy is being intertwined with the Chinese economy because we are mostly dependent on electronics items and machineries that are imported from China. Now, above all this, there are other scenarios that are taking place. What are those things? Let us look into that. Now, the current Chinese dominance is in capital goods. Now, the share of capital goods among China's exports has risen exponentially since 1992. From being the least exported goods in 1992, it has become the most exported. And the rise and fall of the Chinese capital goods in the past three decades is humongous. And after 2005, it has overridden the US economy in the percentage of the world's total capital good, goods exports. And also, there is another important factor to take into consideration, the over-dependence of the top exporting nations on the Chinese products. The Chinese share was less than 3% in 1990 regarding the capital goods imports of selected countries. But in 2018, it grew to more than 30 percentage. That is an important thing to notice. Now, the Chinese are trying to make other nations dependent on their products. Now, the next thing to take into consideration is that the chief suppliers are the Chinese in the capital good markets. Now, dependence on China is even more acute when only imports of electrical equipment, machinery and mechanical appliances are considered. Now, there has been news rounds that Hong Kong and Japan are the top importers of Chinese items. So, now let us look into the question. So, do what do you think is the answer? I, I hope that you are clear with the question and with my explanation. So, the answer is that all the four are true. Answer is four. I'm sorry for the spacing problem here. And now let us move on to the next question. 
Question number two. In case of the ease of doing business index, which among the following statements are incorrect? A. Economies are ranked on their ease of doing business from 1 to 190. That is, the score is 1 to 190. B. It is published by World Bank. C. It does not include the regulation on employing workers and contracting with the government. Which among these two are right? Now, before moving on to the answer, we should look what is the scenario, what is the context, and how we can develop our answer from the current proceedings or the current affairs. Now, all of you know that the ease of doing business index is one of the most important indicators. Now, economies are ranked in accordance with their performance in ease of doing business report. Because it is an authoritative report to measure the ease of doing business across different countries. It has been used as a valuable tool. And that is something to be remembered. However, a number of irregularities have been reported related to the authenticity and integrity of the data published in the report in the last two to three years. So now the World Bank has decided to flunge the report. Now it has decided to look into the matters of the report and ensure that there is integrity. So what is ease of doing business report? Is explained. Now let us look into other scenarios regarding that. Now the economies are ranked on their ease of doing business from 1 to 190. A high ease of doing business ranking means the regularity environment is more conducive to the starting and operation of a local firm. That means if you're high in ease of doing business index, that means you are a favorable nation for doing business. Now doing business also measures regulation on employing workers and contracting with the government. Remember doing business requires regulation on the employing workers. But here is the take. Now the ease of doing business index do not include these criteria. Okay, remember that it does not involve with regulation on employing workers and contracting with the government. So now coming back to the question, which among these two are right? So obviously you know that A is right. Economies are ranked on their ease of doing business from 1 to 190. Now B, it is published by World Bank. That too is right. So A is right. B is right. Now what about C? It does not include the regulation on employing workers and contracting with the government. Does it include that? Does it include? No, it does not include that. So that too is right. So, but here is the take. Which among the following statements are incorrect? All these three statements are right. So, none of the above statements are incorrect. So, the answer is for none of the above. Now, let's move on to the third question or the third ingredient. It talks about geographical indication. Now, a geographical indication is a sign used on products that have a specific geographical origin and possesses qualities or a reputation that are due to that origin. Which of the following statements are correct? Now, there is an explanation for geographical indication. Now, which of the following options are right? Or which of the following statements are right? And choose the right option. Now, A, under Paris Convention for the Protection of Industrial Property, geographical indications are covered as an element of IPRs. Now, what is IPRs? Intellectual property rights. Now, look at the second statement, B. They are also covered under articles of the trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights, TRIPS agreement, which was part of the agreements concluding the Uruguay round of GATT negotiations. Now, the Uruguay round is very important meeting or convention. So you should go back to history and be very well equipped with the topic Uruguay round. 
so do that but we need to conclude which is the correct option now before that why there is geographical indication in the news now upsc always asks questions related to a very important issue now recently what happened is that you will be very much familiar with the odisha's kandalmal district now kandalmal district was a place in which 2007 or 2007 2006 there was a pogrom you will be familiar with a pogrom that is like something like a communal riot but odisha's kandamal district is also famous for kandamal haldi now it is famous for that particular type of turmeric now a year after the famed organic turmeric of odisha's kandamal district received the geographical indication tag it has received this particular haldi has received geographical indication tag thousands of farmers but still thousands of farmers who hope to make a profit out of the crop are in a bad situation now because due to the covid 19 distress there is no one to procure their harvest that is a problem that they are facing now you know what is the geographical indication tag it is being given in the statement its definition is being well portrayed here now in addition you need to remember that the qualities characteristics or reputation of the product should be essentially due to the place of origin and this is a very important criteria now the place of origin is something that gives reputation to the particular product and this place of origin and the qualities and the reputation that emanates from this particular region is the reason why geographical indication tag is being given to that particular product of a particular origin so that is something you need to remember now also remember that geographical indications are typically used for agriculture products food stuffs wine and spirit drinks handicrafts and industrial products now after going through all these things which of the following statements are right now the thing is that internationally there are two agreements or two legal frame, frameworks under which the geographical indication tag comes or the geographical indication as a sign comes now in india there is an act called geographical indications of goods act 1999 which came into force in 2003 and this is a legal framework as a member of world trade organization this is the legal framework that india has adopted now as i said there are two legal frameworks two important legal frameworks within which the geographical indication tag comes and that are paris convention and trips so both of the statements are right so both of the statements are right so one is the right answer a and b it comes under the paris convention and also with respect to trips trade related aspects of intellectual property rights agreement move on to the moving on to the next now four which among the following is correct with respect to ro ro so a roll on roll off ships are cargo ships designed to carry wheeled cargo such as cars trucks semi trailer trucks trailers and railroad cars that are driven on and off the ship on their own wheels or using a platform vehicle and b statement b this is a technique to lift on lift off vehicles which use a crane to load and unload cargo no there are two specific mnemonics that are discussed here one is ro ro and lo lo now the statement says that ro ro that is the first statement says that ro ro is a particular kind of cargo ships that is designed to carry wheeled cargo and the second statement says that lo lo is a technique and ro ro is a technique that comes under this lo lo technique so which among the following options are right 1 a only 2 a and b 3 b only for none of the above 
Now, first you need to understand what is RO, RO. Now, why does it comes in news? What is the importance of RO, RO? Now, recently, just one day before, Karnataka Chief Minister B.S. Yadurappa on Sunday flagged off the maiden roll-on, roll-off train from Bengaluru to Solapur through video conferencing. Now, this particular RO, RO train, what is this? Now, RO, RO ships are cargo ships designed to carry wheeled cargo. And that statement, A statement, is right. But, it is in contrast to lift-on, lift-off vehicles, which use a crane to load and unload cargo. So, this is not a technique that comes under LOLO, but LOLO is lifting. It is like loading and unloading. But roll-on, roll-off is like integrating, integrating with the cargo ship. So, LOLO is not a part of RORO. So, statement B is wrong. So, which is right? 1. A only. Moving on. 5. Question number 5. Prominent cardiologist and founding director of the National Heart Institute in Delhi, Patmavadi, Shiva Ramakrishna Iyer passed away recently. So, Patmavadi, Shiva Ramakrishna Iyer, she has passed away recently. So, which among them are credited to her? So, consider the following statements and which among this particular statement or which all of the statements are right. A. Establishing the first cardiac clinic and cath lab at the Lady Hardinge Medical College in Delhi. B. Initiation of India's first doctorate of medicine in cardiology. C. Setting up cardiology departments at the prestigious Maulana Asad Medical College, GB Panth Hospital. So there are options, four options. 1. A, B and C. 2 A and B, 3 A and C for none of the above. Now, Patmavati Shiva Ramakrishna Iyer is a noted figure. She was born in 1917 in Burma. And she was the first woman to receive a medical college degree from Rangoon Medical College. And pa Sri Patmavati was awarded the Padma Bhushan in 1967 and Padma Vibhushan in 1992. These are not important with respect to UPSC, but these are for your general information. And there are many other first to credit. Establishing the first cardiac clinic and cath lab at the Lady Hardinge Medical College in Delhi is one of her achievements. A is right. And B, initiation of India's first doctorate of medicine in cardiology is also her achievement. Now what about C? Let us look. Now, setting up of a cardiology department at the prestigious Maulana Asad Medical College. Two is her achievement. So, all the three statements are right. So, all the three are credited with her. And first one is the right answer. A, B and C. Let us move on to the sixth question. Now, question number six. Which of the following correctly relates to the term BIPOC, often seen in news? Now look at the term BIPOC. Now what is BIPOC? Now BIPOC has been in news recently because of Black Lives Matter movement. Now what is Black Lives Matter movement? All of you knew that because of the George Floyd death in US in May, the blacks in America have started to resent and are in the verge of an ongoing movement called Black Lives Matter. So, the acronym for Black, Indigenous and People of Other Color, BIPOC, the term to gain traction on the internet when Black Lives Matter movement grew. So, that is BIPOC. Now, look at the options. A. The time period corresponding to Anno Domini. No, that's wrong. B. Protest against racial discrimination in the US. That is the right statement. And the other statement like including Neutron Star and Large Hadron Collider are not right. So, it is a protest against racial discrimination in the US. BIPOC. BIPOC means 
black indigenous and people of other color. Now the seventh question. Consider the following rivers. Brahmani, Nagavali, Vamsadara, Kolab, Subarnarega. Which of the above rivers have catchment areas in Odisha? Now there are options A, 1, 2, 3 only, B, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, C, 2, 3 and 5 only, D, 1, 3 and 5 only. Now before looking into the right answer, we should know why this is in news. Now 14 lakh people are affected and 17 killed in Odisha floods and this is what is happening in the recent days in Odisha and this is a devastating news. Now over 14 lakh people are affected due to the flood in five river systems of Odisha. So Odisha have five major river system and the news article is from Hindu. And this article also talks about the Naraj Barrage which is in Mahanadi. And Naraj Barrage, N-A-R-A-J, B-A-R-R-A-G-E and it's being constructed as a flood control structure in Mahanadi river. So it talks about Naraj Barrage, it talks about the five river systems of Odisha. And the river systems within a UPSC perspective are important because questions are asked about river systems. And that's why this question is here. Now, when you are considering the river systems of Odisha, certain rivers are important. Like the river Mahanadi. River Mahanadi originates in Amarkandak hills of Bastar Plateau in Raipur, Chhattisgarh. Now, Bastar is also an important place with respect to the security aspects because Bastar is a place affected by Naxalite movements. So, River Mahanadi is an important river. River Barhala Balaga or Buddha Balaga. It's an east flowing median river in northern part of Odisha. That is an important river. River Brahmani is an important river. It's the second largest river in Odisha. And it actually originates in the Chota Nagpur Plateau of Bihar when the Sang and the Koyal rivers meet. And it joins near Rurkela and forms river Brahmani. So Brahmani is an important river. Now the other important river is Baitarni. It originates in the Gonasiga Hills in Odisha. And also, never forget Subarnarega. It's one of the longest east flowing interstate rivers in Jharkhand, West Bengal, and Odisha. So, its origin is in Ranji. So, these are the rivers, and there are other important rivers like Vamsadara, Rushkulia, Indravadi, and Kolab. So, I think that you got the answer. Because Brahmani, Nagavali, Vamsadara, Kolab, Subarnarega are all important rivers which have catchment areas in Odisha. So the answer is B, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Let us move on to the 8th question. Consider the following statements with reference to Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Now RCEP is in news for nearly about 6 or 7 months because this is one of the largest free trading agreement if it happens, if it happens because it has not yet happened. Now this is in news because it, it is associated with a political statement by Ram Madhav, who is a BJP general secretary. But that is not the, our important thing here. We are just focusing on regional comprehensive economic partnership. Now what is RCEP? Now, RCEP is a 15-nation regional comprehensive economic partnership, a free trade agreement between ASEAN nation and its partners in free trade agreement. That is about 15 nations, 15 or 16 nations presently, excluding India. If India comes, there are 16 nations. Now the issue is related to India's joining. Now India has certain problems with the RCEP agreement. Because if you sign the RCEP agreement, India is afraid that 
there will be a surge of chinese products in the indian market and it will be difficult to decouple the chinese economy with the indian economy so look at the statements the question requires us to consider the two statements and which of the following statements is are correct the first statement is it is a proposed free trade agreement between 10 asean countries with its six free trade agreement partners which includes india china australia new zealand japan and usa now the second statement is rcep negotiations included trade in both goods and services now before moving on i need to talk something about rcep now the first idea of rcep was announced by the asean group in 2012 and the negotiators met for the first time in 2013 a proposed free trade agreement between the 10 asean nations and the six free trade agreement partners is what is known as rcep now which are the partners that is that is an important aspect to remember it includes india china australia new zealand japan and south korea now i think you got the answer half because the first statement is wrong because it does not include usa it is south korea so the first statement is wrong and also remember that rcep is world's biggest free trade agreement it includes 33 percentage of world's gdp now the areas cover different aspects of trade like trade in goods services investment economic technical cooperation intellectual property competition dispute settlement e-commerce and other small and medium enterprises now what is india's problem i have discussed already what is india's problem the problem is that india want to avoid or india need a mechanism to avoid a sudden surge in imports from china and shifting of the base here for determining the taxation from 2014 to 2019 these are india's council so i have already told you that goods and services are essential part of rcep so statement 2 is right so which of the following statements are right just one two only so the answer is b so moving on to ninth question consider the following statements the central government first statement the central government is empowered by the citizenship act 1955 to issue national identity card to every citizen of india and to maintain a national register of indian citizens at present foreigners that is the second statement at present foreigners tribunals under the foreigners tribunals order 1964 are functioning only in assam and west bengal which of the above statements is are correct a1 only b2 only c both 1 and 2 d neither 1 no 2 so why is this particular question this question is related to the nrc national register of citizenship so relating to the nrc there is an important news that is circulating these days now what is the news exactly after a year after the publication of the complete national register of citizens nearly 19 lakhs of people are excluded from the updated list in asa now nrc is something that is happening exclusively with respect to asa now moving on to the details of nrc you will be familiar with what is nrc nrc was first conducted with respect to the census of 1951 it was conducted after the census of 1951 now from where does this idea of nrc come from it comes from the citizenship act of 1955 because in the citizenship act in the section 14a of the act central government may compulsory register every citizen of india and issue national identity card to her or him and also the central government may maintain a national register of indian citizens and this is where the nrc comes from and it is there in the citizenship act of 1955 so obviously 
the first statement is right. Now, why you need NRC? Because it is to segregate Indian citizens living in Assam from those who had illegally illegally sorry illegally entered the state from neighboring countries like Bangladesh after March 25, 1971. 1971 is a year in which the Bangladesh nation was formed. So after that there was numerous migrational trials. So the timeline of NRC updation in Assam stands from 1971. So massive illegal migration to Assam from Bangladesh happened during the Bangladesh War of Independence. Now, there is another important event called the Assam Accord signing in 1985 during the time of Raji Gandhi and it was signed and it was agreed upon that the illegal migrants from Bangladesh would be founded. So, Assamese people they want these illegal migrants to be found and sent back to the natives. So in 2013, SC had asked the state to start the process of updating NRC. And in 2019, August 31, the final list of NRC was published. So when it was published, 19 lakh people are out of the list. Now, what is another possibility for these 19 lakh people? They should be approaching a foreigner's tribunal within 120 days from the date of receiving the rejection slip. They will be receiving a rejection slip. And what is foreigner's tribunal? It is the appellate authority for those excluded from NRC. So foreigner's order of 1964 led to the founding of foreigner's tribunal. So FTs has the power of civil court and FTs are established only in Assam. So you got the second statement as wrong because it does not include West Bengal. It is exclusive for Assam. So the second statement is wrong and A is the right answer, one only. Now the last and the final question. Consider the following statements with reference to the recently concluded US Taliban peace agreement. Statement one, the agreement was signed with the concurrence of current government of Afghanistan Second, according to the agreement, the U.S. recognized Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan as a state. Which of the following statements is are correct? A. One only. B. Two only. C. Both. One and two. D. Neither. One. No. Two. Now, discussing the U.S. Taliban peace agreement, you will be much familiar that the agreement was signed in 2019 after 18 years of war. Now, after 18 years of war, why has this agreement been signed? Now, the US want to withdraw its troop by 2021. And that is the reason why the USA is looking for a peace agreement with Taliban. They are not looking it with Afghan government because Afghanis government has lost their authority in Afghanistan because of the Taliban's influence both in the government and within the territory in the form of military power. So the Afghan peace deal has its beginning in 2001, September 11, World Trade Center attack. Now subsequently, after 2001, military campaign was led by US against Al-Qaeda and Taliban government. Now Taliban was removed from power in Afghanistan, but Taliban turned out to be an insurgent force and continued deadly attacks. Now US has used approximately 137 billion for reconstruction of Afghanistan. Now, US Taliban negotiation began in September 2018, and the two sides came to an agreement after a series of talks in 2019. Now, there are certain deals in US Taliban agreement. Now, first and foremost thing is that US doesn't want any individual or any group to use Afghanistan to attack United States and its allies. And also, 
യു എസ് നീഡ് എ മെക്കാനിസം ആൻഡ് അനൗൺസ്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് എ ടൈം ലൈൻ ഫോർ ദ വിഡ്രോവൽ ഓഫ് ഓൾ ഫോറിൻ ഫോഴ്സസ് ഫ്രം അഫ്ഗാനിസ്ഥാൻ ആൻഡ് ദിസ് ഇസ് അനദർ പ്രൊവിഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ യു എസ് താലിബാൻ പീസ് ഡീൽ ദ യുണൈറ്റഡ് നേഷൻസ് ആൻഡ് യു എസ് സാങ്ഷൻസ് ഓൺ താലിബാൻ ലീഡേഴ്സ് വിൽ ബി റിമൂവ്ഡ് ആൻഡ് ദിസ് ഇസ് എ പ്രൊവിഷൻ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ബീങ്സ് ഇൻ ഫേവർ ഓഫ് താലിബാൻ ആൻഡ് ദിസ് പ്രൊവിഷൻ ഈസ് നീഡ് ടു ബി കെപ്റ്റ് ഓർ നീഡ് ടു ബി റിമെമ്പേർഡ് because united nations and us sanctions on taliban when it is removed it will affect india now the last provision is that the both sides promise to support intra afghan peace negotiations now all these four provision how is this going to affect india the thing is that india need a legitimate stable government in afghanistan and it does not want taliban to take over the control of afghanistan because if taliban forms government it is most likely to be a pro pakistan government so india doesn't want a talibanese leadership in afghanistan so coming back to the question and the statements look at the first statement the agreement was signed with the concurrence of current government of afghanistan no it was signed between us and taliban so the first statement is wrong and the second thing is that according to the agreement the us recognize islamic emirate of afghanistan as a state no it has not recognized that too is wrong so d neither one nor one nor two is the right answer so friends thank you our cafe snacks ends here so most probably i will be discussing things just like you are listening to a podcast so keep on listening and improve your accuracy and efficiency thank you we'll see you tomorrow